OK, so let's get started. Just so that things are completely clear. I mean, I, I'm sorry for, for those who actually know this by heart. But let's imagine. <laughs> Let's imagine we are all new. This is a new model. Nobody has ever looked at it, at it before. It is Friday afternoon. We have a great idea. And we want to do a simulation. Or no, we don't want to do a simulation. We want to sample the probability distribution, which is the partition function of this new model. This new model has a z equals to sum over all spin configurations e to the minus beta e of sigma. So this is the, so it's a new model. We don't know whether anybody has ever looked at it before. And we set up our first algorithm. This first algorithm will be Markov easing.py. So what we do is we pick, it's on the three, three by three lattice. We take one spin. This spin is equal k, so we take it randomly. Just so that we all, so we take a random spin. We take a random spin, and, we, and the move we do is we try to flip it. Now we compute pi b and pi a. Now detailed balance tells us that the probability pi a times the probability to go from A to B must be equal to pi B times the probability from B to A. So pi B is E to the minus beta energy of B. Pi A is, is this. And this makes that we have probability from A to B divided by probability from B to A must be equal to this if we satisfy detailed balance, of course. And this is implemented through p from a to b equals to minimum of 1 e to the minus beta eb minus ea. So then, so this is just to answer to, again, it's your question, but it's probably all the question of other people. Then no other questions have to be asked. Then there's one question left. Come on. Thank you. Exactly. So what is the correlation time of this algorithm? So we, so we also have to check that it's aperiodic and so on and so on, but that this is just a detail. We just have to check. We just have to make, we have to find out on what time scale it converges from this initial choice. You see, the initial choice is this. This is the initial choice. That this means that at time zero, we have a random distribution. So this means pi. So we have the probability at time t equals to 0 is random. OK. And now it is the question on which time scale do we converge towards t infinity, a uh, pi infinity, which is the probability distribution, the Boltzmann distribution. Pi equals to pi infinity. So on what is the time scale? But besides this, we are completely clean. There's now no question that, that has to be asked. We are conf we are conf you know we know that we will convert, and there's not a single thing that we have to know. There's no mystery. We don't have to ask our thesis advisor whether well, this is okay. We know it, right? We have because we've proven it ourselves. Alright? So then I had this discussion a little bit. So see here. Here, here we are at high temperature. We have little areas, right? Here we have like 15 spins that are up. Here we have 20 spins that are down, a few spins that are up. And now what we have to do is we'll take a random walk in, or some walk in configuration space. And we have to sample configurations, just like in this case of the, of the, um, uh, of the uh, uh, of the Gaussian distribution that we had before, sometimes we have to find a configuration that was up. You know, we had a we had a, a cloud. The distribution was something like this. Sometimes we have to find this here. We have to sample here. We have to sample here. We have to sample here, and we have to sample here. So, yeah, understand what I what I mean? 
We have to find samples, but not all the same. So what it means is sometimes we have to have a sample that is all minus here, but then there will be a sample that has the same energy, same, same, the same right to be here, where this will be plus. But flipping these 15 or three or four spins will be easy with this, with this algorithm where we take one by one, right? It will be easy. So this algorithm will be fine at high temperature. The algorithm Markov easing, if we had more time, we should program it, you know. Let me find a nice little, uh, okay, now it's blocked. So for, for configurations like, so look at this one. Anyway, so there are some configurations. So the, the configurations around T, for T, around the critical temperature, we have these big blobs. So for a large system, this would be 1 million or 10 million, you know, more or less upspins. They are not all upspins, but 10 million spins that are more or less up. This is the, like, 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 it's like this that this configuration look at the critical time. Then you have... 150 million spins that are more down. Okay? So I'm just telling you, okay? And now you have the same problem that we had before with this, with the Gaussian. You have to sample here and here and here and here. So you should go from these where everybody is up. 150 million particles are up. You understand what I'm talking, telling you? The sampling means you have to get the representative representatives, but different representatives. They should not all look exactly like this with just a few spins uh, flipped. All right? And that is where the Markov easing, Markov easing .pi, that is a fantastic little algorithm, but it has a problem there. So now we had this class, the first idea, and now we go into seriously into our, into our business here. Okay? Seriously. Now, I want to show you that we can satisfy, here we are in detailed balance, we can satisfy detailed balance, okay, for any value of p. Now, let me put this away. I'll come over. Okay, now the way we go is now, but let's, let's run the algorithm. Let's run the algorithm. I accept this with p, then I accept this with p, with P, with P. This one I have rejected, maybe. Let me do this here. Yeah. This one I have rejected. I think a system with two screens makes no sense. <laughs> I mean, just think of it. I mean, I mean, this is just a parenthesis. A system with two screens with independent uh, screens, that would be useful. But a system with two screens, in my opinion, makes no sense. Uh, maybe I would have to, your answer on it. It's just, it's just, I mean, I mean, I'm not a Schrodinger uh, cat. I'm, I mean, I'm, a, I'm not Schrodinger's cat. So I cannot be. So anyway, so now, so now I'm, I'm, I'm like this, like this, like this. Okay. So this is, I have not yet accepted this move. It's just the move that I propose. Okay, now what I'm saying is I'm, I'm a little bit confused of what, what my program is. So now you have some, uh, so this is the cluster. Let's call this a cluster, and I want to flip it. That's my idea. Okay, but now I have to see that, uh, you know, that's the principle of life. It means that I have some connections to, to, to negative, to, they are plus minus here. So, and we have to count them. Could we count them? One, two, three, four. So it's a number. I think it's either 14 or 18. So the plus minus, we'll go through this, we'll spend half an hour on this. So I think the plus minus links are, I think it's 18. Maybe somebody can take it over here or over there. I think one, two, three, four. 18. You agree with it? Okay. So we have 18 links plus minus. But we stopped there because we always, we, you know, it was in our, we had the idea, you know, over beers yesterday, we decided only to have a cluster with plus and plus and plus because this is what we thought was more, more interesting. Okay? 
and we have the full right to build this cluster. But now, we have also plus plus links, plus plus links. So we stopped here because we have this plus plus links, and I think there are 14 of them. OK, so now, now the cluster construction stopped here. That's what I tell you. This was, this was when the cluster was stopped. So why did it stop here? Well, it stopped here because we had 14 chances of growing it, because we would have accepted this one with probability p. Following me? Right? So we have, so we rejected this move. We accept, we accept each neighbor with probability p, but this one we did not accept. So there is somewhere at the end of our argument, there will be a 1 minus p to the power of 14 in our argument. You agree with that? You understand? I build a cluster. I take, you know, you can build a cluster. You take a neighbor, and this neighbor you take it with probably take him or her with probability p. At some point, the cluster construction is over. Over. Stop. So now, why did you stop there? Well, because there are some some links across the boundary of the cluster, and those you did not take. Okay, and each of them was independent, so you accepted each of everybody with probability p. You rejected each of these one, each of these links with probability one minus p. So because 14 times you rejected, there somewhere must be at the end of the day there will be a one minus p to the 14. I'll show you in just a minute. So something has to happen. Yeah. So now, I also have to see the, but let, let's do it later. We'll have to do the, the return move, and we'll do this later. We'll go through it twice, I think. OK. So here we have it. OK. OK. Now, I don't know what I wrote in my, on my slides. But now, let me, use, let me use the detailed balance condition. The detailed balance condition says pi of a times the probability to move from A to B must be pi of B, P from B to A. So that is a real rule. But now we say that this one here, according to Metropolis and Hastings, is the probability of pi of A. You understand? This is the, the Boltzmann distribution, not the Boltzmann weight. Pi of A times the a priori probability to go from a to b times the acceptance probability from a to b must be pi of b times a b to a times probability acceptance from b to a. So everything in this equation is known, except of what, what is not known for us now. What do we have to compute? Yes, we have, is, the, is the Boltzmann weight, weight unknown? No. I mean, we know. I mean, the, this is the configuration A. Excuse me. This is the Boltzmann. This is the configuration A. This is configuration A. And configuration B is this same configuration with the, with the gray pluses down to minus. So is the Boltzmann distribution pi a, is this known? Yes, right? It's the e to the minus beta energy. So is the, uh, is the, so the a priori probability to go from a to b is the probability to construct this cluster. So the probability to construct this cluster has a few, so there's a, there's a probability, there must be a factor of p here, and a 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 p here, and so on. 
There must be a number of p's. But then, it's really unfortunate that I, but then these same p's also appear in the configuration b. So this is configuration b. I should put it, okay, I should write it down here. This is configuration b. And the, now, you know, in, you have to compute the probability to go from a to b and the probability from b to a. So some parts, okay, so the cluster is plus, and then there are some pluses here and some minus. This is configuration A. And configuration B, oh, excuse me, I took this away. And configuration B is this cluster here with a little hole is minus, and this plus, 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 and minus. And this is configuration B. So now, the cluster construction probability has some terms that are internal between a spin that is up and a spin that is up here. But you notice that this thing is the same as the plus, as the probability if we have minus and minus. So what happens inside the cluster is not really, is not really interesting. It's not really important. But what is interesting is the, in the cluster construction probability is also the cluster the, the end of the cluster construction. So why did we stop here at this configuration? So why did we stop here? Well, we stopped here with probability 1 minus p to the, what was it, 14 or 18? 14, I think. And here, from b to a, we stopped we would have stopped because now we have not 14 links minus minus. We stopped this cluster construction because we have 1, 2, 3, chuck, chuck, and those would be 18. So we have this probability from A, uh, the A power probability from B to A will be 1 minus P to the power of 18. All right, so this means, is this clear? Is this clear? Very, very easy. Very, very, you know, there's no, and then there's some chunk, let's say, there's some chunk that is internal, and there's the same chunk that is internal. Okay, so we have inside, you know, the probability to add a new link, minus, minus, in the cluster that is minus and minus is exactly the same as the probability to add a new link plus plus in the cluster plus plus that unfortunately I have to take. So, so this thing here is the same as this here. So you know I can just I can just take it out. Okay? All right, so we are finished. <laughs> time flies. No, time doesn't fly, so uh, it's exactly the contrary. So but we'll tell we'll tell other stories later. So we already know that p from a to b divided by p from b to a is equal to pi b divided by pi a times 1 minus p to the power of 18 divided by one minus p to the power of 14. So now, <laughs> what remains is to compute pi b divided by pi a. Pi b is e to the minus beta energy of b, and pi a is e to the minus beta energy of a. All right? So now, check. So now you see this is configuration A, and we have to compute its energy. So we should compute what is the energy here. But you know, it's kind of a little silly, because now this is B, this is configuration B. Next time I give this talk, I put an enormous B here. It would be so great. Okay, so but this one is the same as this one. So I don't have to take this into account. Then there's this energy. You see this here? Two, two up spins. But this has the same energy as two down spins. So this does not play a role at, 
Okay, this does not play a role at all because I have to I have to look at the at the audience. Oh, excuse me. Okay, all right. So this does not play a role. Okay, so the only thing that plays a role is the energy across the boundary. So what is the energy across the boundary? Can you can you help me again? So here we had plus minus was 18, right? In configuration A, and minus and plus plus were 14. So the energy across the boundary, above, above the boundary of the cluster, is 18 times. What is the energy of plus minus? Huh? It's minus one or plus one? Plus one. Thank you. And minus 14. And in configuration B, how many plus minus links do we have? How many plus minus links do we have in configuration B? No, don't count. I'm just. Huh? 14. Thank you. 14, and how many plus plus links do we have? Zero, because we have no plus plus. How many minus minus links do we have? 18. So in A, energy across the boundary is this, and energy in B across the boundary is 14 minus 18. So now I have to look into my notes because one of the numbers, so energy is n1 minus n2. So this is, let's call, a, n, let's call this n1 and this call this n2. And then this is n2 and this is n1. All right, so now we are already finished. We are already finished because now we have P A to B divided by P from B to A is equal to pi B is E to the minus beta, the energy, but only the energy across the boundary, N2 minus N1. divided by 1 minus p to the power of 14 with n2 times 1 minus p to the n1 divided by e to the minus beta n1 minus n2. So how do we program this algorithm now? So we are finished. So I'm, I'm here. I'm finished. OK? So how do we program this algorithm? If we have this equation, this equation, P, P A to B divided by P, does anybody check the algebra? I mean, just algebra is a little big word for you know, consistently putting the n1 instead of 18 and n2 instead of 14. So this is this, so this is then metropolis algorithm means that P from A to B is what? Minimum, excuse me, say, yes, thank you. So this is where you see you have been successful and you're corrected. So minimum of what? One. This whole story here, right? OK, let's do it later. All right? So now, now this is a number. So you see, n1 
is 18, N2 is 14 in this cluster construction. So beta is a number, N1 is a number, N2 is a number. Right? As I finished my cluster construction, I ended up, I can, can look at how many N1s, how many plus plus, and how many plus minus I do have. And this number for the choice of beta, you know, is 0.156367. Just a, just, you know, it's a number. It's not a function. It's a number. You follow, following? It's a number. I can, for any beta, beta is a number, and this is a number. And then I have to accept this move with probability 0.1563678, and I have to reject it otherwise. And this number depends on P. See? So I told you that I, was, I would be able to find an algorithm that was valid for any value of P. And this is it. Except for P going to 1, I think this kind of, for P going to 1, uh, I have a problem. And that was my trivial algorithm that was soldering the spins together. And this is just a, OK? So. This is acceptance. This is the acceptance, yes. This is, this is the, so this is the acceptance, yes. No, no, this is the acceptance, yes. This is the, exactly. So this is the, this little p, this is the acceptance probability for the move that had a biased construction. So it has a biased construction to this a. So this, we are fully in, in the, in the, in the, um, we are fully in the, um, uh, you know, in this, in the, in the bias. So the way we went from A to B is completely biased, but we're taking the bias away. All right. So now, now let's do a little simplification. All right. You see, let's do all the N2s on one side and all the N1s on the other side. So here we have a E to the minus beta N2. And here we have an n to the plus beta n2. You see this? Beta n2. This mix makes e to the minus 2 beta n2 divided by 1 minus p to the n2. And then multiplied by 1 minus p to the n1, and this gives here e to the minus 2 beta n1. And this is nothing else, nothing different. This is equal to minimum of 1 e to the minus 2 beta divided by 1 minus p to the n2 times 1 minus p divided by e to the minus 2 beta to the n1. This is the same number, 0 0.156367. So I didn't change anything. But now, a miracle comes out. Miracle. Miraculoso. Okay? Completely miraculoso is wunderbar. So completely wunderbar is that e to the my if e to the minus two beta is equal to one minus p, then this number is one. So the magic value, and this is what you should do in your thesis or postdoc work, you know, be the first on a new subject and find the magic value is e to the minus 2 beta is 1 minus p, or even better, if p is equal to 1 minus e to the minus 2 beta, then the acceptance probability is 1. But I again insist the algorithm, of course, 
functions for all p's, but it is at its best value. So p is equal to 1 minus e to the minus 2 beta is the magic value. OK? I do not expect any questions on this uh, derivation, because it's so easy that everybody has understood it. Right? I mean, is there, is there any question one could, one could be tempted to ask? <laughs> OK, OK. Who say, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know anything about critical temperatures. Yes, it, it is true. I mean, of course. So that now, uh, yes, it it will it will turn out. That this is the percolation threshold at the critical point for the for the percolation problem that is uh, corresponds to this uh, this problem, but this algorithm. But the reason why I did not bring this up is because I got interested in this subject. I was a few years younger, and somebody was doing a thesis on this algorithm, and he thought because it was, it's common knowledge that this algorithm only works at the critical temperature. And this is complete bullshit. It's just completely wrong. It's just completely wrong. I mean, I did not talk about this algorithm works at any temperature. For any beta, you choose 1 minus p. Uh, p equals 1 minus e to the minus 2 beta. You need real good, good, good eyes to. Wow. I really admire you. I mean, you should get a job with Lufthansa. I mean, if you can. <laughs> You should be a pilot. I mean, why are you a physicist if you are sitting so so far back and can still see things? You should work with Lufthansa. In addition, they are always on strike, so you don't have to work at all. <laughs> so anyway, so this is p equals one minus. Three. So I give I give a little bit uh, shorthanded uh, answer. So, but this algorithm works at all temperatures, and now the question is. What is the size of the clusters? What will happen is that the cluster sizes will be exactly at the percolation. It will be percolating at the critical temperature. So is there any other question on, just on the algorithm? I don't expect any. OK. Yes? Yes. Yes. That is the only question that is, uh, that, that, that is really good. I mean, that, that you, no, no. OK. You, you, got, you got this? I, I drew these pictures here. See? This guy here, but you cannot, I mean, you're not a Lufthansa pilot here, right? So this is, so this is exactly for you. I tried to get this one with P from this one, with P from this one, and with P from this one. But once it's over, it's over. I ask once, you know, it's, it's like, with, not with dating, but it's a little bit like this. You know, you know each one asks the other one once, and if there's rejection, then it may still be, belong to the same clique, but from somebody else. OK? So it's a link. It's, it's on the edges, the algorithm functions. Later. Anything else? OK, so we can all program this algorithm. And sure enough, OK, so here again, I thought I would, have, I would need help. But it's, OK, so it's, 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 it's the same, right? It's, it's the same what I just had. OK, so this is the algorithm, the Wolf cluster algorithm. All right? This is the algorithm. There's no, I mean, it's complete. It's complete. 14 lines. I start. Oh, yeah, let me show you. So now it would be really interesting to have an asynchronous system of presentation things here. So anyway, so I started here. So now what I do, and this is, OK, let me go here. Just a moment. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Pew. All right, so now what I'm doing is the following. I'm using an idea that comes from a paper with Roderich, that I wrote with Roderich, Roderich some. And we call it the pocket algorithm. And the thing is the following. 
when we have a, 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 we have a cluster, so we are constructing the cluster. There are some spins that are there that have already been there for a long time, and some spins that are newly inside the cluster. You know what I mean? I just added them. I'm, I'm constructing this thing here. I'm constructing, constructing, constructing. So at each time, there are some that just came in, and they have not been checked on whether they wanted to have themselves new neighbors. You get this idea? And those that are kind of old folks, they have been in the cluster for a while, and I don't have to check again whether their neighbors want to be. I already checked all the neighbors of the, of the old folks. OK, you get the idea? Back there? Thank you. So, so now the new ones, these new ones, new spins in the cluster, we call them the pocket. It's like right, my right hand pocket. And let me explain this in the algorithm. Oh, here it is. So now I take a random spin. That is how I construct the cluster. And initially I say the pocket is just that spin, and the cluster is also just that spin. All right? Following? Because I just have one spin and it's that is the cluster. So now I'm saying while the pocket is not empty, I take one guy out of the pocket, I check all its neighbors. I check whether the neighbors have the same spin, and they are not yet in the cluster. And if they are the same spin and are not yet in the cluster, then I, then I throw a random number between 0 and 1, check whether it's smaller than p, and I add this new one into the pocket and add it to the cluster. And then, once I'm done with checking all its neighbors, I take it out of the of, of pocket, because now it's an old folk. It's an old guy. All right. And when the cluster is empty, the construction is over. I flip the cluster. I flip the spins. And that is the, that is the Wolf cluster algorithm. OK? So then the question comes, what happens when you are like in a loop and you are at back, where you touch the cluster again? And there was one bone which was already not accepted. And you, you are there again from the other side. Oh, that is just, no, but that, that cannot happen because, yes, of course, this is accounted to, but I can tell you exactly how it is because it's the new spin. See, I take, I put this in the pocket, all the new spins, I put them in the pocket. I said, they are not processed yet, the new spins. And then, but I, each spin gets only taken once out of the pocket. I take it out of pocket, I check all its neighbors, so this link, this link, this link, and this link. I throw away the neighbors that are already in the, in the cluster, and then I have fresh links outside of the cluster. And those I check, but then the one, this guy, of which I'm checking the neighbors, gets thrown out of the, of the, of the pocket. So um, it, will not, it, will not, uh, it will not come in again. Okay, we can, we can do it again, but this is the, so this is the 12-line Wolf cluster algorithm. And I think this is something that everybody should should have uh, thought about or should have programmed. So the cluster. So there's no 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 need to have this complete com very complicated. Cl you know, normally, first of all, you know, this this is almost like this is almost like poetry. I find it's kind of. I mean, I've written these programs also in Fortran 77. They look a little different. <laughs> so, but I mean, uh, this is uh, this is uh, this is like it, and this is the algorithm. So anyway, so. What I'm just saying, here's the cluster. Here, here are the new guys. Here are the new guys. These are the pocket. They are inside the cluster, but they call them the pocket side. So now the algorithm is take this out, take this pocket side, check all its neighbors. Don't check those that are already in the cluster. Okay. And then maybe add them or don't add them, but then take this out of the pocket, and this becomes an old site. Okay, then this out of the pocket, and then this one will be in the pocket if I accept it. 
Okay, so this again, uh, 15 lines of code and its values. So now, let me show you a movie. Excuse me. Why do you choose the, the, which one to pick up from the public? No, I don't have to. Thanks for the question. I don't have to do it. I, could, I, I have another version of, the, of where I do. Uh, it was an exam question last year. Uh, but it's, were you in Paris? No. <laughs> Because, welcome. <laughs> anyway, so uh, so that was the exam question. I mean, it's never a big question, but uh, so the question is: Can we replace the random choice of random choice of the pocket? Means I have a pocket full of uh, pocket full of uh, sites that I have to check. Do I have to take a random choice, or can I take just any one? So we proposed. Uh, I replace this line by pop. Pocket dot pop. I just pop one out of the pocket, and of course, this algorithm is also also acceptable. It's it's the same. It's a different algorithm, but it's uh, it's also it's true. Thanks for the question. That's okay. Other more other insight. This gets okay. You have to think hard. <laughs> anyway, so okay. So that that is the algorithm. You know, subliminal message. You know, there's no point in hiding these structures in uh, 1,500,000 line codes. I mean, the, the idea is here. So this, again, I said this is the algorithm of um, Uli Wolf from 1989, complete revolution, one of the, I would say, together with the, um, with the original works on molecular dynamics and uh, on Monte Carlo. Uh, this is like, this is, this is what, what kind of pulled off the whole revolution. I can tell you there were lots of people around. The question was not really for the easing model because this was uh, already half so. The question was how to use it for the XY model where this, where this is a good, good idea to do. And there were lots of people who almost got the good idea. And uh, so I just encourage you, if you have a good idea or almost half-baked idea, go through and find, it, find the answer. And you'll be, you'll be a man. So now, okay, <laughs> so now I have a movie. I have a friend in Hollywood who runs them for me. So this is the, at the critical point, one iteration after the other, the clusters that I construct. Blue, I'm colorblind, so I cannot really see them very well, but blue, I think, are the ups. Red are the downs. And there is some kind of strange color that gives the cluster. So sometimes, so this runs. So at the critical point, that was your question, at the critical point, sometimes you have small clusters here. It was a very small cluster. Sometimes you have very large clusters. They percolate, and they have, um, so they have a finite proportion. So in one, one time step, you flip of the order of half of the system or one quarter of the system. So this construction is extremely, extremely uh, successful. Okay, you see what, what you know what, what I'm doing. What I'm doing here. So I start the cluster construction. It is actually that program or the graphics version of that program that is used, and that is uh, you can you can be sure that it is correct. All right. So let's marvel at this uh, beautiful program. So this means that at each time step, half of the system, or you know, of the order of n, but sometimes very very few, but sometimes very many, uh, spins flip, and of course. This this algorithm has a has a mixing time, a correlation time, which is almost independent of uh, of system size. Okay, so this is at the critical point. Above the critical point, the clusters are much smaller, or get smaller. Below the critical point, the clusters are the majority of the system, and they only leave uh, less than of the order of n for the rest. Okay, now I have. Uh, so this this finishes what I wanted to, to, to uh, explain on the Wolf cluster algorithm. Again, there is just uh, Metropolis Hastings. The only concept that you have to understand is Metropolis Hastings, and the basic concept that any algorithm that any algorithm that you that you make p is the algorithm can be combined with the with the a priori probability to satisfy detailed or global balance. Detailed in this case, detailed balance. So now, in the last two, two hours, I want to discuss with you uh, another version 
of uh, algorithms, which are the heat bath algorithms. So let us, before going into the heat bath algorithm, let us remind us what the Metropolis algorithm meant. The naive Metropolis algorithm, remember, we had it for hard spheres, and we had it for spin systems. The naive Metropolis algorithm meant that you have a probability pi of A. I think everybody now understands that this is the Boltzmann distribution of A, the Boltzmann rate for A, times the A prior probability times the acceptance probability is pi of B. So this equation, it's getting outdated because the global balance algorithms are coming up, and you will see, you know, it would be just fantastic. But the local algorithms was that the probability to move the spin from here to here was the same as the probability to move the spin, the, 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 excuse me, let me rewind. The probability to move the, the disk from here to here to propose the move was the same as the probability to propose the move from here to here. In the local Monte Carlo, in the local uh, spin algorithm, easing algorithm, right, easing, the probability to flip like this was the same as the probability to flip like this, to propose this move. So in the Metropolis algorithm, do you, do you understand what I mean, right? So the, the proposal from here to here is the same as the proposal from here to here. The probability to move by one centimeter to the right is the same as the probability to move by one centimeter to the left. That is the DNA of the of the uh, Metropolis algorithm. That is the DNA. So then, the a priori probability is the same, and you can cut it off, and you end up with pi of a pi to the formula that we all know. You cut this off, and then you have, and then you get back to the to the formula without the a priori probability. So that is the DNA of the Metropolis algorithm. Now, the DNA of the heat bath algorithm is the opposite. In the heat bath algorithm, you have the same equation, because that is the equation that we have to satisfy, unless we work in Paris and go to nice restaurants. And between restaurants, we work on global balance algorithms. But anyway, so in the heat bath algorithm, the a priori choice is not random. You want to go from A to B with the probability pi of b. You go to this new configuration with its equilibrium probability. You go from b to a with pi of a. And you see what this does in this equation? I mean, if I don't have an answer, I'll go on strike like the Lufthansa pilots. What happens if, I don't look at you, what happens if I choose a priori probability from a to b, like pi of b, and a pi of, what, what, what do you get? It's written here. <laughs> the acceptance probabilities are equal to one, or one half. You see, this is different. So if I move into the new configuration with its equilibrium probability weight, then I have no problem with rejection. I have no rejections. That is the DNA of the heat bath algorithm. But the idea of the heat bath algorithm is to apply this to a subsystem, not to the whole system. Because if we could apply it to the whole system, we were back to direct sampling, right? We would be back to direct sampling. So we do direct sampling on a small system. Now let me apply this heat bath algorithm in the spin system. So I chose, so for example, this guy. You marvel because it's such a beautiful picture, or it's beautiful. I can I can sign it and then uh, send it to you. <laughs> okay. So now this one, now, so I take this spin out, and now I put it into plus with the probability pi plus, and I put it into minus with probability pi minus, and then I can accept it. Okay. So I take these spins away because they don't play. So now the, what is the the, um, the, the field on this spin is now equals to 2. I have 3 plus 1 minus makes 2. Spin is blue. So what is the probability of the, of, of the spin up? It is e to the 
to h beta, I would say, right? Plus h beta. What is so if it is up, up then then the energy is if it's up, then the energy is uh, minus one, minus one, minus two, minus three, and minus two. Then the energy is minus two. Let's say that. So if just this is just a little reminder. If if I are up, then the energy is minus two. If it's down, then the energy is plus two. Okay. All right, so this means that I have to accept pi plus. I have to go to the plus configuration with probability e to e to the beta h. So let me just write this down. Everybody reminds it. <coughs> So, in this configuration, the field is equal to 2. And the energy of, if I, if I choose a plus, is minus 2. The weight, if I choose a plus, is e to the minus beta energy Okay, and E down is plus 2, and pi minus is E to the minus beta h. So now I would be well advised exceptionally to normalize the probabilities and to no normalize them. I normalize them with this, this plus this, so I have, I have this one. So now the heat pass algorithm is I take the spin away. I compute what is the probability of plus and minus, and without taking into account what it was before, I take it to plus or take it to minus. Everybody knew that heat bus easing, easing dot pi would come up. This is the program heat bus easing dot pi. All right. It actually implements this idea. Uh, you start with initial choice here, then I start with k, random, I take a random number between 0 and 1, I compute h, and then I have to, to check e to the beta h divided by e to the beta h plus e to the minus beta h, and I divide by e to the beta h, so this makes 1 divided by 1 plus e to the minus 2 beta h. Okay, you see this is the same. The, okay, so this is 1. Okay, so this is programmed here. And if epsilon, if the random number is smaller than 1 divided by 1 plus exponential of minus 2 beta h, then I check to put the spin to 1, and otherwise I put the spin to minus 1. So this is the bona fide, completely exact equivalent algorithm to the, um, to the uh, uh, Markov easing the, 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 the metropolis algorithm. And now comes comes the, the cherry on the cake. I'll show you. Because I'll run it. So now, you see, I ran it from an initial choice that was plus and minus 1 for all sides. Okay, so I took an initial random. But it would be easy for all of us to change this line into saying S is equal to all plus. Okay, we could change this. We would probably not, should not write on this blackboard, on this board here, but we could do it on the computer. We can say S equals to, we would, the one multiplied by N can be done very easily. So then we can run it from an initial configuration that is all plus. And that is exactly what is the next, the next Pixar movie. 
one of my students started to work with, wanted to start with to work with Pixar, but then he decided to work with Mathematica. Now he's the big developer of the big data. Anyway, so I started with plus, okay? You see, at time equals to zero, I compute, I, I want to, I move, you know, I need time step, I, I, take, I take out one spin and I replace it or don't, you understand what I'm doing here? I'm just showing the simulation from the all plus. And then I run it. Maxim Berman was the cameraman. Isn't that beautiful? So this is a local algorithm. So now we are iteration 500, 6,000, 7,000, 8,000, 9,000, 10,000, 11,000. And it gets slower. See? 11,729, 31, 32, 35. Check. So, I've <laughs> for some reason we chose to run it for 10,743 steps. And this was the final configuration. Anyway, so you saw it already. So now, now I, I run the same program from the all minus configuration. There will be a little, a little trick later, so uh, pay attention. All right, so it started all minus, but then the minus is getting away. The plus are taking over. There's a fight between, it's almost, and I ran exactly the same time. Okay, 10,742, this is the configuration. And now let's compare the two. So this is the final configuration from the ups. And this is the final configuration from the down. I can tell you if you ever want to read a great paper, read this paper by Prop and Wilson. Because Prop and Wilson, uh, I think it was Prop. Wilson is one of my collaborators now, I'm very proud. Uh, Prop wanted to, he's a mathematician, he wanted to do Monte Carlo calculation. And he said, of course, I'll do it this way. <laughs> I'll show you. So now, let me go to the program. Did you see this little line here? Did everybody, anybody see that I had a random seat? One, two, three, four, five, six here. So I used, you understand what this does? It seeds the random number generator. And all the random numbers that are generated are the same. So I had the two programs. I had the two programs. And at time step one, it was spin number 753 that was uh, updated. And the random number, Upsilon, was 0.753448, okay? So the, the, I used the same random numbers for the one and for the other. And it so happens, it so happens that Using the same, from, so let's say at t equals to zero, I started with an all up, and I started with an all down. Uh, excuse me. So the configuration, and then at each time step, you can look at the program yourself later, at each time step, at time step, at time step one, I updated this spin here, here, and here, and I used the same random number upsilon to update. And now it's very easy to see this function one divided by one plus e to the beta h as a function of h. It goes like this. This function looks like this. So if what is clear, if I chose to put this spin here, and this spin has a, the h here of the minus configuration is smaller than the h of the plus configuration. 
Okay? Here. And especially the sigma configuration, sigma, all the sigmas, is smaller or equal than the sigma of the plus configuration. Smaller means that each spin is either the same or is smaller. So here it's easy, right? Here you have a plus and minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus. So it's clear that this configuration is smaller than this one. Okay? So what I can now prove is that because the spin here, the, the, the field the H, if the spin is small, excuse me, the spin minus, I think I should write larger for the Hawks back in the, in the, the pilots. So now because the spin is smaller than the, the, so you know what this means? You understand? The spin configuration itself is smaller. This means that each spin is either smaller or the same. So I never have the situation that I have a plus here, where here I have a minus. So because it's like this, I can prove very easily, you can do it yourself, that the configuration at t equals 1 is also smaller than this one. So this, con this configuration will always will evolve, and this configuration will evolve, but it will always be smaller. But at some point, because both of them do a random walk, at some time point, they will couple. And at this point, they will continue to move together. So it was not just at 10,742 that I had the same configuration. For all later times, I also had the same configuration. So now I have the question, what happens? So I, now I prove that the all plus and the all minus merge. What happens to, an, to another initial configuration? For example, plus, minus, plus, plus, minus, plus, 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 minus. So this configuration is also smaller than this configuration because it never has a plus spin, plus spin here where it has a minus spin, and it's also larger than this. So this green one will also be, will be, will remain sandwiched in here and will probably merge with one of the other and then will stay. So this is an example of what I was discussing yesterday, or the day before yesterday, of, of, um, of a coupling algorithm. And here we had the coupling, it took place, coupling took place at t equals, I think it was 10,474. It depends on the choice of random numbers, okay? But here, for this algorithm, for, for this choice of random numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, the coupling time for this, it was already in quite a large system that I showed you. The coupling was other time. So now, what I wanted to show you, tell you is, this is really important because in this Pop and Wilson paper, because they introduced the coupling time, or it was possible, the work goes back to, um, uh, to a, a long time ago. But now we have a new time, which is the coupling time. And this coupling time is always larger than the correlation time, or in mathematical terms, than the mixing time. So now, and this is the time at which all memory of the initial configuration is forgotten. And at that time, doing Markov chain Monte Carlo, you are as good as doing direct sampling. So there's one detail I didn't show you. It is the coupling here has to be done from the past. We can, we can discuss this later uh, over beers. But so this, what I wanted to show is you see here, I mean, do it yourself. Get this program. Run it once with random seed, with this random seed. Initial choice, one, 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 one. 
and one initial choice, another one. And you'll see at some point they will couple, and they will happily evolve exactly in the same way ever after. And this means that the configuration back here, down here, so this is time, right? Down here, will have forgotten all memory of the initial state. And this means that for this kind of problem, this means it, it must have this half order, it's called half order, but for the easing model, you have enormous power in Markov chain Monte Carlo methods. Because you can prove one you have, once you have converged. There is no burn in time. There is no saying, well, you know, you have little, little numerical errors and errors, they kind of, anyway, so, so you, have a, you have a pure calculation. And at the end of your simulation, you have a perfect sample. So we wrote a paper once. <laughs> we wrote a paper uh, on, this, on these algorithms. Perfect was called perfect sampling. It's perfect sampling. You, know, you understand perfect sampling? Because it has no more influence of the initial configuration. You understand that point? If you, if you start from all plus or from all minus and get exactly the same result, or from any other initial configuration, get the same result, then you have, you have really no influence. There's no influence of the initial configuration. So we wrote a paper on perfect sampling algorithms for spin and so on. And then we got back a referee report from physical review letters. And they would say, this paper has to be rejected because only God is perfect. And you're not allowed to use the word perfect in the title of. <laughs> So we changed the, the, the title and we called it exact something because this thing is called perfect something or exact something, and then the paper got through. Okay. So does the coupling time depend on where you start at all? I mean, is it the same for any given pair? Obviously not. No, no. This is the coupling time for everybody. All the two to the n configurations have coupled at that time, when the all plus and the all minus come together. They're like two shepherds. You know, when they come together, then everybody has come together. So you have some way of finding some maximum coupling time by comparing two configurations. Well, I have to run the all plus and the all minus, and this gives the maximum. But then you understand that this time, you know, how can this be compatible with the exponential decay of the correlation function? It can only be compatible if this coupling time is sometimes larger and sometimes shorter. Right? Because if there was an upper limit for the coupling time for the easing model, then you know, at that time, you know, the, de the, the correlation function goes to zero. There is, there's no correlation with the initial state left. So what happens is that this time, it, it is, for this mo model, it is the mixing time. In fact, what happens is the mixing time is of the same order of the coupling time is log n larger than the, than, the, than, than the mixing time. That means the correlation time. Let me put it like this, correlation. OK, but so, uh, so sometimes, sometimes it's larger. And the, the way it goes, it, in fact, it's, uh, you have to run it. But this is a detail. You have to run it from the back. In fact, you, what, what you have to do is you have to do it. Time t equals to 0, you have to do, have your perfect sample or your exact sample. And then you have to go from the back. But anyway, so this is, this is an example of, um, uh, of uh, these new ideas on coupling where you can really control tau. You really know tau. OK? Well, if you have this, here you have a partial order. Let's call this a partial order. OK? Oh, the, the way it is distributed, it's, it's exponentially distributed. So it's the coupling time itself. It has an exponential distribution. And the mean value is the mean correlation time times the log logarithm of n. And you have, a, you have an exponential distribution. You must have an exponential distribution, by the way. You, it must be exponential. So, it's, so this exponential distribution that we also showed, is in fact, is only... You know that when we have this exponential distribution, it is the an ex, you know some of the configuration, some of the some of the samples. Samples means choices of one, two, three, four, five, six. But you have to verify for each simulation you run, which, which is 
Exactly, exactly. So, yes, yes, from the simulation. And you can do it, but I, I don't want to go, you cannot do it in spin glasses, for example. Uh, you can do it for, for hard spheres only up to density of 0.3. So there are big, big limitations because, uh, because um, the coupling time is larger than the correlation time. Okay. And it is of the same order only if this half order exists. In, for example, for spin glasses, you don't have this half order anymore. And it can also be much larger. But anyway, I just wanted to show that, that's, uh, that everybody is working very hard to get, uh, to get strict mathematical limits on what is the correlation time. So this means, for the easy model, uh, you know, you'll all be professors of physics everywhere. So you don't teach, uh, you don't teach um, Metropolis algorithm anymore. You immediately teach uh, these coupling algorithms because you want to show results in computation that are really trustworthy. So you don't discuss any burning time. This is nothing. It's just, you just do sampling, and you stop once you have one sample. Then you start a new simulation. OK, so I have 17 more slides. But then, then it will be over. OK, did you, can I, are you, am I allowed to run this again? All right, so, so here it runs hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of, from the all down configuration. And it will always be smaller. You'll never have a spin that is up while well, the other configuration is down. OK, so this is the configuration up, down. All right, coupling. All right, so the conclusion was here. For the easing model, we discussed the subject of enumeration. I didn't really discuss the uh, connection between counting and listing. So what we did with the gray code, gray code, you know, every, anybody should, should remember it, you know, gray code chain going through a list of, by changing one, one thing. So we did, we did the listing. And enumeration means two things. It means either counting, Counting how many configurations are there of energy four. That is also enumeration. Or just enumerating all of them. And you can say, for example, there is the Kutch and Ward solution of the easing model, the exact solution of the easing model. It's a counting algorithm, uh, a counting enumeration of loops. Then we had the Metropolis Markov chain sampling. Remember, what is the DNA of Markov chain? Because now we will soon leave, leave each other. I have, I have the last five minutes to teach you something. So what is, the, what is the DNA of Metropolis algorithm? The proposal probability. That is of the naive algorithm, right? That is exactly so. The, the DNA of the Metropolis algorithm, the probability with which you propose this move is the same with, with which you propose the move back. This is overcome in the Metropolis Hastings algorithm, where you have an a priori probability to go from A to B and an a priority probability go from b to a. But in that case, when computing whether you accept this move, you also, in your head, have to do all the algebra for the back move. When we did this, we, we showed the move b, and we had to compute all the algebra. What would be the move to accept, the, what would, the, would be the probability to, move, to accept the move from b to a? So then we had the cluster algorithms. And this, and, uh, we, we used, uh, this was in the, in the, in the in the framework of the uh, Metropolis Hastings algorithm. The cluster algorithm means that you can construct, you can do anything, you can have any algorithm, right? It sounds, it sounded a little strange, any algorithm, and the uh, Metropolis Hastings, the a priori probability will always recover and will always recover detailed balance. Then we had the heat bath algorithm. Heat bath algorithm is, say it again, what is, the, what is the characteristic of the heat bath algorithm? It is you. Exact. Huh? Exact. Well, it's exact. You, you accept, you, there's no ejections, that is true. And you always. You go to the new configuration with its equilibrium probability, with its probability. But you cannot do it for the whole system because then you would be then you would be doing detail, uh, you would be doing uh, direct sampling. You apply it to a subsystem. The subsystem, the spin system was enormous. We used it only for a subsystem, which was the spin and its four neighbors. But then once we, had, but there were no, there was no rejection, of course. Right? 
we, at the end of the day, we either put it up or put it down. So and then, fantastic subject of all is the coupling. And coupling, it is clear, the coupling time is always larger than the correlation time. And when you have half order, then you have a, then you have a log, logarithmic behavior between the two. But in spin glasses below some temperature, for example, the coupling time can become infinite or almost infinite, whereas, whereas the correlation time becomes finite. And then we had these nice algorithms, enumerate easing using the gray code, remember this? Thermal easing, density of states, not necessary to do a calculation at any temperature if you can compute the density of state. Then we had this beautiful Markov easing with the Metropolis algorithm, the cluster easing, that was the Wolf algorithm, and the heat bath easing, easing with the coupling application. And the coupling came from the fact that I seeded the random number generator, right? So we used the same sequence of random numbers in the program that started from all minus and the program that started from all plus. And this is all I wanted to say to you. And I thank you for your attention and for your interest. And that is it. Oh, now it's a question. Question time. Question time. Excuse me. Fifth. 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 Robin Wilson. Okay. Oh, not mine. Yes, it's, it's, it's <laughs> didn't didn't go that well. But you you look in. I, I've, re, I've written a book. It's on our MOOC. It's you just do coupling and you find it. you can. It's but it's easy. It's easy. I mean, it's just, you know, it's, it's such a revolution in our concept. I mean, I always, I was brought up thinking that there's the world of direct sample, you know, where you have direct sample and Markov chain sampling can never, you know, there's some flaw in the Markov method because it can never be, it can never sample the, the equilibrium distribution. So I was brought up like this. Everybody was brought up like this. And all of a sudden, these people did their first Markov chain calculation. They had not read a single paper. And they thought, well, you know, I should not do, they were mathematicians, I should not do a calculation that doesn't know what, when, and they set it up like this. Beautiful. And so this, at that time, so it was 20 years ago, we in our community understood that finally, Markov chain methods are able to do perfect sampling. And that is a real revolution. It can also apply. It's a whole industry. It's a whole industry. The problem is that sometimes, let's put it this way, it, it even applies for continuous, these coupling algorithms can be used to have strict limits on the convergence times, for example, of hard sphere algorithms. And they will be used, these are the best algorithms to give limits on, on, the, on the liquid phase. They have physical implications. But, but it's, you have to work a little bit to, to, they are fantastic algorithms. I mean, go through the literature, it's, it's really interesting. Tough, but fantastic algorithm. Okay, but so there's no separation between, between the, between detailed, between, uh, between, Markov chain sampling, and what was the other? Direct, Direct sampling, exactly, I forgot. Okay. <laughs> okay. So you mentioned that there will be new codes that come from this global balance idea, so yes. forget the details. Is there like anything like for spins, like for icing and so on? Yes, that is for Based example. Already for for easing my... Yes, so this is what I wanted to do, but I, for, uh, so I, have a, I have one paper from last week and one paper next week. Uh, one is on the XY model, and the other one will be on the, I cannot say yet, but, um, uh, but so we use, we use this idea of global balance. So it's an archive. You can, you can see it. It, it is not as fast as the, uh, as the, as the Wolf-Glass diagram, but it's an algorithm where you always, each spin always turns clockwise. So one spin turns clockwise, and the other one turns and they are quite fast algorithms. If they can be, they can be used in this. So you can completely the cluster. No, no, no. It's just, it's just one spin that turns, and then. But I didn't, I didn't prepare it now. But, but this, you can look it up. The paper is very nice. We, we didn't have many results, so we wrote it more nicely. <laughs> uh, so anyway, so so one spin turns, and then it um, at some point one of the neighbors will not be. You know the idea of this of this uh, of this algorithm is at some point one of the uh, of the algorithms uh, of the uh, neighbors will will object, and then it's the one that objects instead of 
going back and, and rejecting the move, it's that, that, that spin then that will start moving. Anyway, so we'll, we'll see whether, so these are new ideas, new algorithms, very simple to, very simple to implement. And we'll see whether they may, they will make an impact in spin glasses, for example, XY spin glasses or Heisenberg spin glasses. We'll see. We'll have. But we'll the idea is to speed, and speed up the actual. Of course. Yeah. Of course, of course. That, that's the idea, of course. Of course, they have, they have what is tau. That is, and. Okay. All right, any more questions, comments, contradictions, oppositions? All right. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.